Hi folks, Rob here. In this video we're doing something a little bit different. What I'd like to do is bring to your attention a certain injustice, tell you about what's going on, and then uh, issue a call to action and see if we can't get some, some help for someone. Now we're told that in this country we have a right to a fair trial. The problem is when you have one party which has essentially unlimited resources, like the state, and these are brought to bear against one singular individual, uh, it puts an economic burden on one party that isn't placed on the other, and it means it's not really a fair trial. Not only that, but the problem with it is that precedents can be set which then affects your rights. You might think, oh, it doesn't affect you, but it's kind of like a house burning in your village. It's not your house, so maybe you don't care, but if you do nothing about it, it can easily spread throughout the entire village and affect your house. And Canada is kind of like that village, and our house is uh, our body of rights. And when our body of rights are being affected negatively like this, I think it's important that we stand up and, and do something about it. So I'm going to introduce you to a young, to a, to a not so young man anymore, uh, by the name of Gene Hum. This concerns him and his daughter and what transpired in court when the daughter decided to fight a traffic ticket. Uh, bear in mind, I don't know these people. I've never met them. Uh, I've been talking with Gene for a, a couple of weeks now. Uh, he had never heard of the Freeman concept. He had no idea what it was about. Uh, his daughter decided that the ticket was unfair, so she decided to fight it, did some research online, went to court, and uh, simply asked whether or not her common law rights were going to be respected. The judge apparently decided that, uh, oh, we're dealing with one of these freemen, and just shut her right down. So let's hear from him and what he had to say. Okay, here we are, folks, uh, talking with Gene Hum. He's a, uh, a father out in uh, Alberta. He's got an interesting story to share. Gene, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, thanks for having me, Robert. Good to be here. Uh, I'd like you to explain, uh, in a, using as much detail as necessary, but without too much detail, uh, and for the listeners, tell people what happened. Uh, what had happened was uh, uh, my daughter had received a speeding ticket, and she didn't think it was too fair, so uh, she did a little bit of homework on it, found uh, uh, some issues on, on uh, rights that uh, she wasn't too uh, sure about. And when she went to court, uh, she questioned uh, uh, the judge about those rights. And uh, what happened after that was that uh, the judge uh, tried her in absentia, even though uh, uh, she was standing there in front of him. And then uh, uh, the judge then ordered a sheriff to remove her from the court. Um, when when the, uh, the sheriff uh, was told to remove her from the court, and um, those were those were pretty well the uh, uh, almost the exact words if I can recall. Keep in mind this was uh, in the early December when it happened. Um, uh, remove her from the court, or please remove her from the court uh, courtroom. Uh, when when he was given that order by the by the judge, uh, uh, he came he came straight at my daughter fairly quickly, and instead of uh, slowing down or stopping in front of her or anything, he just started to reach for her. And, and I I thought something was uh, serious was going to happen at that point and. Uh, uh, when he started to reach for her, uh, I, I, I told him not to lay a hand on my daughter, uh, which he did. He grabbed her by the arm uh, pretty forcefully. And after he grabbed her, then I, then I got up and tried to intervene. And I told him to take his hands off my daughter at that time. And um, when, uh, when I intervened, uh, he focused his attention on me. And I wound up getting uh, thrown by this sheriff, uh, basically uh, to, with enough force to clear the bar in the courtroom land on the crown's desk uh, on the other side of the bar and then uh, hit the floor on the other side uh, in, in where the uh, the court clerk sits. Uh, when I looked up again, the sheriff was charging at me once more and he, uh, he got himself all tripped up in the mess that was uh, on the floor and he fell on the floor beside me. I managed to get back up to my feet and I, I wasn't exactly sure what was going on uh, at, this, at this point because this happened really, really fast. Uh, but there were there were about six or seven other officers in the court at that time, and uh, when I stood up, uh, they came straight at me. They surrounded me and they slammed me back down to the to the ground again. Uh, I was slammed down with enough force where after my head hit the floor, I was seeing stars, and then uh, uh, I heard uh, I was I was held down by two, maybe three officers at that time. I'm pretty sure it was three from from the uh, the statements that I read. However. Um, 
when I was being held down, then I could hear somebody say to me, uh, get on your stomach. And then uh, I started getting, uh, getting need in the back, in the small of my back. And this happened three times, but I couldn't move. I was being held down by these, by these officers. Uh, the last knee that I got was a pretty significant one because I felt something give inside of me. And uh, I guess uh, whichever officer it was, I must have uh, felt that as well because then they rolled me onto my stomach. Um, when, I, when I got stood back up, uh, I was threatened with a pepper spray even though I had two, two officers holding me uh, and in cuffs at this time, but uh, then I still had um, uh, OC spray uh, waved in front of my face. And then I was taken to the back of the holding cell in the courtroom, and then I was charged with uh, three charges, uh, assault on a police off or assault on a peace officer, uh, resisting arrest and uh, disturbing the peace. I see. And uh, so now you're going through these charges. Uh, how much have you paid so far in legal fees and other fees? Um, um, but, uh, don't answer that. But uh, has it been uh, uh, financially draining for you? It's, it's been very financially draining, especially in light of the fact that uh, uh, um, I have now lost my job because of this, even though I haven't been convicted of anything. Uh, and the main reason being is that because I'm, I, I need to maintain a security clearance at my place of employment, and because I have been charged, uh, my security clearance has been uh, pulled, so I, in effect, can't do my, my work anymore. And uh, have you, you don't have any history of criminal charges whatsoever? No, no, far from it. I'm just your average guy, a uh, little house in the prairie in the middle of nowhere, uh, making, a, uh, making a living working at the job. I've been at this job for over two decades. I've never, I've never been charged with nothing. Um, clean as a whistle, basically. And uh, so your concern when the, when the sheriff's deputy was moving towards the, your daughter, your concern that was that uh, she was in danger because he seemed to be acting aggressively. <laughs> Um, as soon as he started reaching for you, yeah, I, 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 there's, uh, I had no doubt in my mind that uh, that uh, he was he was going to grab her with uh, uh, without any hesitation. Um, and he wasn't ordered to arrest her, was he? Pardon me. He wasn't ordered to arrest her, but simply to remove her from the courtroom. No, he was just instructed to remove her from the courtroom. I see. Um, and then, uh, as soon as w when you intervened, uh, what did that look like? Um, did you punch him in the face? Is that what you call intervening, or what exactly did you do so that we can understand what uh, what you believe intervening means? Uh, when I intervened, uh, what I what I did basically is try to put my arm in between the two. Uh, I never I never struck anybody. Um, I just and mostly when I did start this action, my back was towards the sheriff. I was facing my daughter at this time uh, because she was she was basically scared. Uh, uh, I was going to use a little bit of profanity there, but uh, she was she was uh, very concerned in the look of her face, blue with the way that he grabbed her. Right. Um, so when I when I tried to intervene, uh, I brought my arm in between the two uh, to try to separate the two. Then I had my back to the sheriff, and I was facing my daughter at the time. In in your estimation, if you were just walking down the street with your daughter, and a man came out of nowhere and grabbed your daughter the way the sheriff's deputy did, do you think that he would be? Uh guilty of committing an assault? No doubt in my mind. Yeah. No doubt in my mind. Okay, so uh, you were essentially protecting your daughter, in your mind, from uh, an overly and unreasonably aggressive uh, court officer. Yes. And the court officer was following directives to remove her, but he hadn't been ordered to assault her, he hadn't been ordered to arrest her, he was merely directed to have her removed from the courtroom, is that correct? That's correct. I see. Okay, well, uh, I will uh, we'll do what we can for you, dude. I, I feel for you. I got to tell you, if from in my book, uh, I think all you were doing was responding lawfully and naturally to a daughter under threat. And I think that as Canadians, we have a duty to stand against this. Oh, it's no doubt. I mean, just because they wear a uniform, it doesn't mean that they're above the law in that regard. All right. uh, they have to show a, a significant amount uh, more restraint than anybody else, I would, I would think. Okay, well, Gene, thank you for your time. You're most welcome, Robert. Thanks for having me. No worries. Okay, so think of this. If the judge had ordered that sheriff's deputy to unlawfully assault her while removing her, and then the sheriff's deputy had done exactly what he had done, they'd both be liable, but he would be in complete compliance with that unlawful order. Orders are lawful when they are directing you to do lawful things. Ordering, uh, giving an order, remove her from the courtroom, completely lawful. But he didn't say assault her and remove her. 
The problem is that if words such as remove her are interpreted by these people, by these sheriff's deputies, as an, uh, a carte blanche to commit a violent assault, then they are interpreting it wrong. And I'll tell you why that is. This right here is called a use of force uh, continuum or guideline. And you'll notice at about the two minute mark, you're supposed to use communication prior to even touching someone. Now, I, I did security for a number of years, and I know what the law is on removing people. And what we were taught was that you identify yourself as uh, acting for an, as an agent for the owner, that they are being directed to leave. You direct them three times to leave, and you tell them, listen, if you don't leave, I am going to grab you, lay hands on you, and escort you out. And if you resist, then that will mean you will face charges of assault. Being told to remove someone from an establishment, from a mall, from a, a bar, if they're just sitting there minding their business, they aren't engaging in any sort of violent confrontation, you have absolutely no right just to go up and grab them like that. This sheriff's deputy should have acted with a great deal more restraint. And here's the thing, you can't outlaw thirst or any other instinct, and a parental instinct to protect one's daughter, one's child, from someone who they witnessed committing an assault, it, it's a natural instinctive response. And to, if a bear had been attacking his daughter, he would have acted. So to say, oh well, you're supposed to have respect for these uniforms, and he was given an order by a judge, so therefore you can't interfere with the peace officer fulfilling his duty. The fact is, unless his duty is to commit an assault, he wasn't committing his duty at all. He wasn't fulfilling his obligations. He was interpreting a lawful order uh, as permission to engage in unlawful activities. The question we must ask our, ourselves is, do we want to maintain the right to respond instinctively when our children are under threat? And are we supposed to assume that these people in uniform are somehow above the law? The fact that the whole thing transpired so quickly, he approached, he, he basically rushed this girl, uh, didn't say anything to her, assaulted her, and then the father steps in to protect her, and within seconds, this guy is in full-on fight mode. The idea that he was approaching the daughter with intent to commit violence is evidenced by the violence that then followed. An unlawful order is one which orders an unlawful act. A lawful order orders a lawful act. And his response to that lawful order was to engage in an unlawful action. Well, folks, so that's the story. We're looking for some help here. This man is, in fact, standing for your rights, and the outcome will affect your ability to protect and defend your daughters. It could set a precedent that would allow a, any, any peace officer to interpret any order as carte blanche to engage in violent action, and it allows them to completely abandon the use of force guidelines which they're supposed to be adhering to. Here's what you can do. This is the Attorney General, um, Kathleen Gainley for Alberta. Here's her information. Her phone number is 780-427-2339. Give them a call at that number. Send her an email at ministryofjustice at gov.ab.ca. Be nice, be respectful, and uh, bring to their attention the fact that you are at least aware of this situation and you do not support the state bringing action against a, a father who is merely defending his daughter against the unlawful actions of a sheriff's deputy. We are also set up a GoFundMe page so that you can uh, donate to his defense. This is going to cost him probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars and he's lost his job because of this. The man has no criminal record and all he did was in, react instinctively uh, to, as a father to his daughter being assaulted. I think that's really, really hurtful. I think that's really dangerous to our country. And so we're asking people to come up with five, ten dollars. Donate to this man. He's taken a beating for doing nothing more than doing what anyone would do instinctively. So if you're a parent, you have a, a daughter or a son, and you are the type of person who would react instinctively to protecting them, 
and you want that right to be recognized and maintained, then please call the Attorney General and if you can, donate a couple of dollars to this GoFundMe campaign. Thank you for your time.